Hi, this is David Wilson with the Software Freedom School. The goal of today's video is to introduce the concept of base machines and differential clones in VirtualBox. Lots of our classes require that you have multiple virtual machines and one quick way to create lots of uh, virtual machines without requiring a lot of space or a lot of time is to use a differential clone. They create practically instantly and they only require the amount of space that the differences between the clone and its source machine requires. So let's get started. So we're going to start uh, with CentOS. We're going to start by downloading CentOS. I noticed that recently they did a new release, uh, 1511. The last version was 1501. So I downloaded the new version and uh, I had already downloaded it. So that's why I'm clicking cancel here and instead going to the MD5 sums and then we're going to bust out to a shell terminal any second and run MD5 sum against the recently downloaded version. So you should go and download it and then you should always run MD5 sum against your download. Make sure that you have a good download um, because you're going to be using this to build a reference machine and if you have an error in your reference machine then all of your instances from the reference machine will also have the error. Alright, now that we know we've got a good image, we're going to go ahead and create a base machine from that image. I like to set my memory pretty low in the base machine. I can always bring it up later, but if I start spinning up a bunch of instances with high virtual memory, I could conceivably hang my host operating system and I don't want that. So on first boot, VirtualBox has a handy uh, default where it lets me specify the ISO um, so that I don't have to do it within the settings of the virtual machine and that's that's nice so I can just go straight into starting the machine. Uh, I'm going to choose install CentOS 7. I don't need to check the ISO anymore because it's already been checked. I checked it with MD5 some a few moments ago. This next piece is uh, going to take a little while while it boots up. All right, we're booting off of the downloaded ISO now to do the installation. And then I'm going to click Next. Um, most of these things will configure themselves, except that I'll have to configure uh, the hard disk that I want to install to. Since that destroys any previous content, uh, the installers thought that it would be wise to have you confirm that part. Now here at Users, uh, most folks are going to set a root password, but I found that I didn't have to if I make a user an administrator. Set up a first user, make them an administrator, and then once I've confirmed that user, notice that the attention symbol on root password has gone away. So that's no longer a malconfiguration. Um, I've got a good user who can do the administration on this system and so I don't have to sign in as root like an old neckbeard. <clears throat> Rich, talking to you. Um, there will be a couple of screen flashes while I delete some of the sections of inactivity. And that's the end of the installation. Uh, reboot and it's going to boot up. 
We're going to confirm that everything's working correctly. We can get signed in. And then after that sign in, we're going to take a take the first of at least three snapshots. Take a snapshot right here, right now. Name it just installed or something like that. Don't change the machine until you've taken a snapshot. All right, in this next section, we're going to do a full update on the machine. This is one of the th reasons why we're why we use a why we use base virtual machines. Rather than taking the time to do all those uh, patches to every instance, we're going to do all of the patches that have been issued since the release of the ISO that we used for the installation one time to the reference machine and let them be picked up automatically by all of the uh, instance virtual machines. This should proceed relatively quickly. One of the things that CentOS and all enterprise Linuxes don't do is uh, start the network interface by default. This is a great trait to retain in the base machine or the reference machine, but it's an annoying trait in the instance virtual machines. So for the reference machine, we'll turn on the interfaces every time we turn on the reference machine. Um, in the instances, we'll make sure that it turns on automatically.
Go to VirtualBox and take another snapshot right now. Don't turn the machine back on or make any more changes to it. Go take a snapshot and name it Just Updated or something like that. This piece here is pretty optional. If you're not interested in adding the guest extensions to your base machine, then you should go ahead and skip to about minute 18 where we start creating instances of the base machine. Uh, if you are interested in uh, adding the extensions, uh, they may make your machine perform a little bit faster. And so for a production quality virtual machine, uh, guest additions or guest extensions or whatever they're called in um, your, per your preferred um, virtualization layer uh, are pretty important. Um, I did a couple of installs of the guest extensions uh, on VirtualBox and found that the requirements uh, or the dependencies are uh, bzip2, uh, the kernel, current kernel devel package, which can be specified as kernel dash devel dash dollar open parent um, uname dash r, which puts uname dash r here on the command line, close parent, um, and the GCC package. So bzip2, GCC, and the current kernel devel. Uh, this is also a good reason why you would do the guest additions after the update, because otherwise you're going to have to do the guest additions all over again. Um, and you will have to update or recompile or reinstall your guest additions every time you update your kernel. So again, if you're not interested in guest additions, just skip on up to uh, minute 18. If you do do guest additions, make sure you take another snapshot.
If you installed the guest editions, make sure you take a snapshot right here. Uh, don't turn the machine back on or make any more changes to it until you take a snapshot. All right, this is the moment you've been waiting for. We're going to start creating some instances from the reference machine or the base VM that we have spent so much time uh, creating. And this is where it starts to pay off. We're gonna create linked clones. By creating a linked clone, it means I don't have to copy the entire file that represents the hard drive of the virtual machine. This saves me a lot of time in instantiating the machine, and it also saves me a lot of hard drive space uh, depending on the size of the base machine. The first copy we're going to create is called Server 1 and we're going to do everything on server one that needs to be done for a unique instance of the reference machine. We need to set the host name and I want for uh, my instances to start their uh, network interface automatically. I don't want to have to keep starting that network interface every time I start a virtual machine. In CentOS, the command to in, uh, set the host name is hostname CTL uh, in CentOS 7. And then to set the machine to, or to set the network interface to start automatically, there's a couple of ways to do it. We can do it with NMCLI or we can do it with NM2E. Um, my favorite way to do it is just to jump straight into the configuration file and change that on boot value from no to yes. So once these two changes are made to get server one to where I want it to be, I'm going to reboot it and make sure that it works correctly. Looks like it came up with the right host name. And it looks like it came up with an IP address. So configuration of that instance took about one minute. Let's do another one. It's important that you use the same snapshot as your reference for any instances that you expect to have identical. It's also important that you make sure to reinitialize MAC addresses for the network cards for all of your instances. Otherwise, they will not be able to talk with one another uh, if they're on the same Ethernet segment because that MAC address from an Ethernet perspective is like a name or a street address.
Looks like it came up with the right host name. And the network interface did start. But both machines have the same IP address. So going to make some configuration changes that will allow them to talk with each other. Uh, let's say that I'm trying to practice something that requires two different servers. It would be nice to have those two different servers on the same network so that they can talk with one another. Um, maybe they're doing database replication or maybe I'm practicing an authentication lab or uh, iSCSI or DNS or anything where I need to have two different servers. So I'm going to need to make some configuration changes. In VirtualBox, the NAT adapter is for single boxes only that are not on a switch with other virtual machines. So we're going to change that to NAT network, but in order to do that, we're going to have to configure a NAT network. So under the file menu, uh, it'll, it's actually preferences. I blew right past it the first time but I got to it the second time. Um, in preferences is NAT network or networks and then uh, under NAT network we just configure a simple one and make sure that DHCP is enabled for that network so that uh, each machine comes up with whatever IP address is available for it on that network. Uh, it has another advantage that the host machine is also connected to that virtual switch. So the host machine is actually the machine that provides the IP addresses. And so server 1, server 2, and the host machine will all be connected to Net network and will all be able to communicate with one another. Over the next few minutes, I'll verify that uh, server 1 and server 2 can ping one another, which is a basic connectivity test, and that they can ping the host. And then finally, I'll add the other machine's IP address and name to Etsy hosts on each of the machines, which will allow them to talk to one another by name.
Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please send a tip to the addresses on the screen.